Uh, we have a need for informal regular session today, uh, February the 25th. And we have three items on the agenda. U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, and the Claremont Sun. We'll start out with uh, Veterans Affairs. Amanda List, Veteran Justice Outreach Specialist. So, proceed. Good morning, Claremont County. It's so glad, I'm so glad to be back. So for some of you who know me, I've been working in the county and social services for about 15 years, and then I left and went to the federal government. So when Commissioner Ubel invited me back to speak, I was super excited. So um, my name is Amanda List, and I'm with the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. My specific role is Veterans Justice Outreach. And the, the VA in general has made a system-wide effort to engage veterans who are in the justice system. We've spent a tremendous amount of time and effort in Hamilton County, and I'm happy to say we're expanding those resources and coming out to Claremont County to um, offer some support to our veterans in the county, along with uh, Mr. Uh, Doherty so, and Veterans Service Commission here in Claremont County. So the first thing that we always ask is eligibility for our veterans. So when I go out to the jails or to the court to the court system and meet with veterans, the first thing I want to know is have you ever served in the US military? We don't ask are you a veteran? And the reason why that is is because veteran has a, a means a different thing for different people. So we always want to ask first, do you serve in the did you have you ever served in the US military? There are some criteria. So after if uh, you served after 1981, you need to have 24 months of consecutive service and at least one day of active duty. I do want to let you know that just because we have reservists or National Guards, they still might be eligible for um, medical benefits with the VA. So my preference is if you know someone who has served and they uh, are in need of medical benefits or they're in some legal trouble, please just give me a call and I will check it or send them to the um, Veteran Service Commission office here in Batavia because they're the experts in determining eligibility and helping people file their claims. This, the VA in general has uh, made some, some tremendous efforts since 1930 when we originally opened with uh, 54 hospitals. We now have 152 medical centers. We have 800 community-based outreach centers, which are, we call our CBOX. We have uh, 126 nursing homes and 35 domiciliaries. Um, and we have all of those things located in our Cincinnati area. So we're very lucky um, to have the, the variety of services at the Cincinnati VA. This is a, just a picture of our Southwest Ohio market. And if you see in green, that's the areas that serve, the Cincinnati VA serves. So we have 17 counties. Um, specific to Claremont, we have uh, our Batavia Seabox, so that's our primary care center. It's right in the corner of 32 and Beechwood. Um, at that site, you can receive primary care benefits. We have an array of specialty care options. We have behavioral health. We also have laboratory and pharmacy. Um, in conjunction with our veteran service office here in Claremont County, they will help uh, veterans with transportation to these sites, not only to our CBOC, but also to our 3200 Vine location, which is our main medical center. So what are the biggies for the Cincinnati VA? And I'm sure most of you all know about the medical center aspect. So we have a surgical floor, we have primary care, we have um, obstetrics. Um, we also have, uh, return for returning service members, we have the OEF, OIF, OND clinic. And uh, the VA is notorious for their acronyms, so yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will help you uh, decipher. The Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Operation New Dawn are our um, current uh, theaters of combat, and that's our Iraqi and Afghanistan wars. So those who are returning have five years of free health care upon separation from the military. And the clinic is specific for those veterans. 
The unique thing about that clinic is that they have extended primary care hours. They also um, have uh, flexibility in appointments. So oftentimes from like, I believe it's eight to 10, they have open hours. So a veteran can walk in and just see a primary care without an appointment. They offer case management, um, not only for financial, uh, work-related issues, uh, mental health, but also for claim benefits. They also offer readjustment counseling, which is probably one of our primary um, resources for OEF, OIF, OND clinic. And that readjustment from coming from combat in, back into civilian life um, can be a struggle. And so our clinic is there to offer that support for those veterans. Our community outreach division is one of our best kept secrets, um, and it is our homeless outreach division. So it is actually located at 909 Vine Street, directly across from the main library in Cincinnati, if you're familiar. Um, we are at that site, we offer health care for homeless veterans, again, our acronyms, HCHV, HUD-VASH, and Grant Per Diem. Okay, you gotta, you gotta do all those for me. Yep, I'm gonna go into each one of them in just okay. a second. thank you. So our HCHV, our Healthcare for Homeless Veterans, this is our foundation of our community outreach. Th these are our social workers who are going out into the community and engaging veterans who are chronically homeless um, and getting them into stable housing. So obviously with the cold weather, this group has been extremely busy because we wanna make sure that not just our veterans but all of our homeless population is safe and warm and has a place to sleep. Our HCHV, one of our big contracts is with the Talbert House, and Talbert House is a pretty big uh, mental health provider here in the area. We have six two-bedroom apartments, and those apartments are for emergency housing. So we put our veterans on a 60-day exit plan. The social worker works with them to get them into transitional or stable housing um, while we've got them off the streets. The main component is to get them linked up to VA services and ensure that they're connected with the VSO or with the, our, their uh, medical health care provider. HUD-VASH is the VA's, um, collaboration, oops, the VA's collaboration with the Housing and Urban Development Center. Um, these are Section 8 vouchers for independent housing for veterans and their families. We currently have 25 vouchers that are active in Claremont County, and we can port vouchers from Hamilton County. So if we have an available voucher in Ham Hamilton County, we can bring it over to Claremont if we have a veteran that meets that criteria. It's not a wait list, it's a priority list. So veterans um, range from uh, severe mental health issues, chronic homelessness, families. We prioritize those and they move up the list um, from a priority group one to six. Um, in that HUD-VASH program, we offer case management. So um, a case manager will come out, try to help address the issues of why housing hasn't been able to be maintained stably in the past. Um, and also if they have some mental health issues. Our grant per diem site is um, a really unique program for the VA because you don't have to be medically eligible to get grant per diem services. You can have an other than honorable discharge. You cannot have a bad conduct discharge, but you can have an other than honorable. And this is our collaboration with a number of different community partners. And um, the one as a Veterans Justice Outreach um, coordinator, what I predominantly refer to would be the Joseph House. So for example, if someone becomes involved in the legal system because of their heroin use, um, and they are an other than honorable veteran, I will go out, do the assessment. If they, I find out that they do not meet the eligibility for VA medical care, I will then refer them to the Joseph House. These programs, they can live up to two years in the program. It's residential treatment at the Joseph House. They address um, employment issues, substance abuse issues, and housing. Some Goodwill would be a program that would be more specific for folks who are, who are a little, um, don't have the barriers of addiction and are focused on employment. The Volunteers of America, um, that would be substance abuse and legal issues. The Brighton Center is our center for women, and it's actually our only specific women's center. It's in Florence, and it is also up to two years for substance abuse treatment and housing stability. 
to receive those benefits, the veteran can go through the Cincinnati VA or they can call the Central Access Point line. And that's the 513-381-SAFE number. They just need to let the operator know that they are a veteran when they call that number. The substance abuse issue is on a lot of people's minds this day, these days. And I know uh, Commissioner Ubel and I have been to many of the opiate task force meetings. And I think that Claremont County has been hit pretty hard with this epidemic. So some of the things that the VA can do to help you support um, your fight in, in the opiate epidemic is we have a number of different substance abuse services. We have detoxification services, both inpatient and out. We have um, what we call 8South, which is our substance abuse residential treatment program. This is a 21-day residential treatment program for those folks who are medically eligible. And um, it's usually about two weeks for once I do the assessment to get them in. Um, we have outpatient substance abuse, and that's at our main hospital, and that is intensive outpatient. And then we have outpatient substance abuse through our primary health care, behavioral health care counselors, which would be at the CBOC. The difference would be more intensity. So our more intensive services would be held at the main campus. And as they trans transition down, we would then put them at the CBOC with an independently licensed therapist here in Claremont. We have a pretty new program, which is our opiate overdose education and naloxone distribution um, clinic. And that clinic is when veterans are identified to be at high risk for opiate overdose. We will bring the veteran in and a family member or someone who's close to them provide education and then provide a naloxone um, kit to that veteran and the family um, to hopefully combat a potential overdose. It's also called Narcan, correct? That, that's correct. And the county sheriffs now, they're keeping that in each of their cars. Claremont County has made, I mean, they're ahead of the game in, in this, and I'm super proud of our sheriff's department because um, it's a controversial subject, but um, they have, I believe all of their deputies are trained and carry um, Narcan kits in their car. And they've yeah. already saved eight lives, I think. Eight, is it eight lives? I would believe that's, you're correct. And I think um, the sheriff representative who was at our meeting said it best. He said, I got into this business because I wanted to save lives. It's not my... Um, choice to determine whose life I save and I thought that was beautiful so um, and all, obviously all EMS providers have the same but to extend it out to the sheriff's office is really a, a real positive because oftentimes they're there before EMS can arrive so absolutely yeah. Um, and that's why we wanted to ensure um, the, I believe we've had in the VA system, the last I heard was nine lives saved um, in the state of Ohio. Our system is pretty new. And what it has been is that, that the veteran who was um, identified as a high risk person may have been with someone and they've distributed, they've um, actually used the Narcan on a, someone that they've been close to. It's pretty, pretty easy. It's just a nasal mist is all it is. That's correct. Um, and most of the VA staff have been trained in it. However, since we're at the medical center, um, you know, it's not something that we usually come across. So <laughs> we also have opiate substitution. Um, our Medicaid assisted treatment programs are uh, methadone, Suboxone, and Vivitrol. Um, unfortunately, our clinics are at the max right now. So we have gone to um, fee out some of those services with community providers like the Cat House. In behavioral health, um, we have our ground, our gatekeeper is our psychiatric evaluation center, which is located in our emergency department. This uh, clinic takes care of doing all the assessments and the level of care needs for veterans who are coming in. And they determine which of the next um, programs that the veteran will go to. So we have partial hospitalization, which is a very intensive outpatient program for folks who are experiencing psychosis or, or suicidal homo homicidal ideation. Um, and they would go through a pre predominantly group psychoeducation program during the day and then meet with individual case managers. Our mental health intensive case managers, there's when our um, veterans who have mental health issues, severe chronic mental health issues, are in the community. These mental health intensive case managers will go out to their homes and provide them with additional support. We also have Treatment and Recovery Activity Center, and that's our um, kind of holistic uh, program that provides uh, extra support in the community 
um, they go on outings and they do ceramics and they do kinds of all kinds of things to get for the social aspect for the, the veteran and their mental health recovery. And then we have our inpatient psychiatry, which is we call Seven North, and that's for acute psychiatry issues. Um, and those are usually about a three to five day stay. We, um, I think that the Cincinnati VA is so lucky because we have a ton of resources. And one of the big resources that we have is our domiciliary in Fort Thomas. And um, if anyone has, I, I would invite anyone to come and, and tour. Um, it's a 58 bed. Uh, residential treatment for uh, duly diagnosed homeless veterans. A lot of times what they'll do is we'll, they'll go through 8 South and then they'll transition to the domiciliary and it's up to a month stay. Um, and they receive uh, counseling and a tremendous amount of support and then there are two tracks. There's an employment track and there's a disability track. So we try to assist our veterans who have some disabilities or if they're service connected, get them the benefits that they are entitled to. Um, or if they're looking for employment, we have our compensated work program. And um, that will be a case manager who works with the veteran to get them back into the, um, the job arena, get them stable, and, or get them to their Chapter 31 benefits so that they can get their, the educational benefits that they have earned. Um, both of these, this program is really successful, I think, because of the amount of time. And that's unusual when you have community substance abuse. We don't have the dollars to put people in residential and to give them that intensive service. So if we can get people to engage and stay, the outcomes are, are much better. We also have the trauma and recovery aspect of, an, um, of the clinic. And that is our um, PTSD and traumatic brain injury clinics. These, uh, we are one of not sure how many we have across the country, but we take um, veterans from all across the country who have post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury. And we have a um, residential program that runs seven weeks. Um, Dr. Kate Chard is in charge of our residential program. And we, have, we use only evidence-based um, treatments for this program and our outpatient therapy. So we have so many options for veterans who are coming back. In fact, we've brought veterans directly from Afghanistan to our um, PTSD clinic uh, so that they can separate successfully. Um, <coughs> the major component, I think, for our trauma and recovery is support and teaching veterans that they're not broken, that uh, PTSD is very similar to um, when you experience a trauma and that your replay button is just stuck. And so we have to help them get unstuck and move forward. Um, Veterans Justice Outreach in Cincinnati has expanded tremendously, which can be good or can be bad. Um, so we have, I think we're one of the only um, sites that has four Veterans Justice Outreach specialists. Um, and you can have the, I'm the contact for Brown, Claremont, Adams, and a portion of Butler. So, but you can contact any of us. And what we do is we provide jail outreach, we um, assist in veteran treatment courts, we provide training and collaboration with law enforcement, and we also have a legal clinic that runs in Cincinnati the second Monday of every month at our 909 Vine Street clinic. So veterans can come, they don't need an appointment, it's from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., and they can get legal consultation. They will not be provided with legal counsel or representation in court, but if they have civil issues that they want to run past an attorney, this is a free, um, a free clinic for them. So we have about, the, the Bureau of Justice Statistics said that about 10% um, of those who are incarcerated are veterans. We are super lucky here in Claremont and Brandon Hepner, um, is that the correct way to say anything? has done a tremendous job in working with us. And Claremont County is the 48th uh, correctional facility in the country to put in um, our VRSS, which is a Department of Defense database. So when someone is booked in, their social security number is run next to the Department of Defense, and it says if, they're, if they've served in the military. That then triggers me to come out, do an assessment at the jail, and then hopefully be able to engage the veteran into whatever the treatment they need that has led to their legal infractions. Um, 
what we see uh, statistically is that we see about 70% of the veterans who are in our justice system are nonviolent. I would say anecdotally, uh, what I see are a lot of substance abuse. So we have resources to um, combat that barrier. We, this is just an example of where we like to come involved. And we've had a really great response with Claremont County. I've met with a number of the um, township officers and the sheriff's department um, in regards to how the VA can help them in educating them on PTSD and mental health issues with veterans. Um, and they've been really receptive. The next session would be the um, court system, and we have met with all of the municipal and, and common police court judges, and they all, once again, have been very receptive to the VA and seem eager to work with us. So I hope that as we move forward, our, the, my numbers this week have gone up dramatically for Claremont County, <laughs> so it's good and bad. I don't know if it's just that we're seeing, we're actually now identifying the veterans that are in our justice system, or if there's been a spike in criminal behavior, I'm hoping it's not that, but. <laughs> Likely that we've, we're, we're finding them. <laughs> we're finding them and we're identifying, which is good because what we see that being is that that will take away from the county dollars to spend on incarcerating folks, to sending them to CRC. Well, they'll be able to use their federal benefits and we have so because we have a program like a 21 day residential treatment program in the domiciliary these are options that they may not have ever been able to access if through community mental health so what we can't do is i can't come in and i can't provide a forensic evaluation um, i can't provide treatment services to someone who's incarcerated i can only come in and and do an assessment. Um, but what I can do is provide these education, uh, educational outreach and, and let the courts and law enforcement know what benefits are available to that veteran. And so like I said, I can't write lengthy, I will write reports that just talk about um, what services are available to the veteran. And um, I have attended many court hearings to let the judge know how the veteran is doing in their treatment. We don't go into detail, but we will say if they're compliant or if they're non-compliant with care. The majority of my referrals are for housing. Um, oftentimes when someone becomes arrested, uh, housing becomes a big issue. And many of the times, especially if there's substance abuse involved, uh, folks have burned many bridges. And so they can't return to their family or friends. So our main issue, our main referrals are for housing. Next would be behavioral health treatment. And, um, and then we go down the list to all of the things that we talked about before that the VA offers. A huge push, and I don't know if any of you watched the Oscars, but our um, crisis line was uh, featured in a documentary that won. Um, and I would highly recommend uh, that you watch it. it. These are, I have put up some little cards that have our crisis line. So if you or you know a veteran who is experiencing emotional crisis, please have them call. We, we believe our estimates are about 22 veterans commit suicide each day and we need to um, dramatically reduce that, if not eliminate it. Um, and the way we can do that is through our um, crisis line and getting veterans connected to the mental health services that they have um, earned. So I will be um, staying for the end of the session. If anybody has any questions or they want to follow up, I'd be more than happy to hang out and uh, chat with you. Okay. Is there anyone that has questions now? Or we'll hold those until the end. I'd like a, just a quick comment that sure. any veteran in Claremont County uh, will never go without between what we have here at the Veteran Services and as well as the Veteran Administration. As well as Veteran Services can actually transport people to the VA over on, what's it, 32 in uh, Beach Wood? And we or do that each downtown. day. We do that each day. Or downtown, yeah. right? Yes, we go downtown too. And I, before I was in this role, I was a medical social worker. And I will say, like, it, it was amazing the support that Claremont County VSO provides to the Claremont County veterans compared to kind of some of our other areas. I would call Howard's team, and I would say, I have a veteran who's being discharged from the hospital today and has no way home. And he would say, we're there. And they would be right there to pick the veteran up and make sure that they got home safely. Howard, the hardest part is just letting veterans know what services are available, right? Yes, sir. Outreach. Thank well, we certainly appreciate both of you being here today to extend that outreach and use our services to get the word out through our cable and 
uh, web access to our meetings. So thank you both, Amanda and Howard, for being here. Thank you. Thank you.